Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, we are doing a pattern review for the first dress as part, as part of the Battle of the Shirt Dress series. Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe button, and also turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this pattern review. All right, so first of all, it seems like I've been gone away from the scene for such a long time because last week we had spring break. So now I'm back, I'm finally in my area. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I am able to go ahead and do a pattern review in my original setting. I don't have to put up a green screen and all of that good stuff to get a, back, a different background because now I'm back home. Thank goodness. Even though the trip was amazing, I am back home so I could start filming in my area once again. So let's go ahead and get right on into this pattern review. Let's start off with the pattern description. All right, so first of all, the pattern that I did for this shirt dress was a Butterick pattern. It's Butterick 6702. It is a Mrs. shirt dress. It has fitted bodice with princess seamed flare skirt, sleeves and length variation. And also this pattern also has a uh, separate, separate pattern pieces for different cup sizes. So for view, view A, which is the view that I did, it has the princess seamed flare skirt. And then it also has three fourth length sleeves. View B, it has the handkerchief style skirt, and it also have long sleeves and cuffs. And view C also have the princess seamed flared skirt. It also have the long sleeves with the cuffs as well. So now that that's a little bit about the pattern description, let's go ahead and get into the notions used. So the notions used for this pattern for view A, which is the view that I did, it calls for nine half inch buttons. However, I used a total of 14 inch, but 14 half inch buttons. So I used nine down the front, one at the top, which means 10. And then I used two on the flap and then two on the taps, which I will get to here shortly about modifications on how I did those things. All right. So now that I talked about the notifications, let's go. Ahead. Now that I talked about the notions used for this pattern, let's go ahead and get into the fabric used. All right, so the fabric used for this um, shirt dress, I use 100% Ankara print from Wax Prints Lace and More. However, Wax Prints Lace and More does not have any more of this fabric. I checked before I did this pattern review, so I will put the link to this fabric below, but Smurfette's Fabric Shop on Etsy has this fabric available at time of recording, which today is Friday, the 25th of March. So it's available as I'm recording this today. So that's the fabric used for this dress. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces used. So for this pattern, I use pattern piece number one, which was the um, front of the dress, which this one has different cup sizes. And because it has different cup sizes, Pattern piece one was the bodice front for cup size A, and then I used pattern piece four through 13. So pattern piece number four, the bodice back, five was the yoke back, six was the skirt front, seven is the skirt side front, eight, the skirt side back, number nine was the skirt back, number 10 was the front band, number 11 was the collar, and then number 12 was collar band. And then you have number 13, which is the sleeves. So it was a lot of pieces. Yes, it was in order to do a shirt dress, but I did do some modifications for different pieces, which I will talk about here shortly. Now that I've talked about the pattern piece issues, let's go ahead and get into the pattern sizing. So the pattern sizing for this shirt dress, um, it starts at six, the smallest size is six through 14. And then the other um, pattern is 14 through 22. The size that I cut, however, was the size 18. And I felt like 18 was great, but I think for the cuff size, I should have cut a C size cup instead of a AB. Now, even though my upper bust, so on the pattern, it tells you to take your upper bust and your bust measurement. Mine is only like a half an inch difference. But one thing that I noticed is 
depending on the bra that you're going to wear, um, you may want to tend to add in half an inch. And the reason why I say that is because this dress is supposed, is meant to be fitted. And it actually says that on the pattern envelope as well. However, because I needed a little bit more room to where I don't feel snugged, um, I should have cut the view, um, not view, but the cup side C instead of a B and still have a good fit. Now this is fitted for sure. So, you know, I don't have a lot of room in this shirt dress at the bodice area, but I do have a lot of room in the waist and the skirt area, which I do like. And it still came out amazing, even though the bodice is really, really fitted. All right. So now that I talked about the sides that I cut, let's talk about the modifications that I made for this pattern. All right. So the modifications made, and I am also doing a clip, which you can look up and see that clip where I'm uh, walk you through how I draft my my tabs for the sleeves, as well as where I put the sleeves, why I um, cut up the sleeve, you know, and as well as how I drafted the flaps. All right, so you can look up and see that um, card in order to go to that. To after you finish this video, you can see how I draft those. All right, so number one, the tabs. So I made tabs on this because. I ran out of fabric to be honest, which is the reason why I did not do the three fourth length sleeves. I did short sleeves. So this dress is really short sleeves, um, are short sleeves instead of the three fourth inch sleeves. All right. So because of the shortness of the sleeves, I didn't want it just to be short sleeves and didn't have any definition. I wanted this shirt dress to be as many details as possible for the pattern because I felt like without the cuffs, I did not give it justice. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been as great as I wanted it to be because I underestimated the fabric. Yes, I used this fabric and I thought I only used one yard, but apparently I used about a yard and a half. So I had to make it do what it do and basically add different details and draft, do some drafting in order to get the style that I wanted. So the first modification I did was to the sleeves and that was basically drafting some ties. And like I said, I'm going to link that video so you can see how I drafted those ties just in case you want to make some ties yourself, you could draft your own ties. It was super easy to make a box, make an arrow, draft it, sew it together. Now I did, I am not walking you through how to sew it together. The only thing I did was show you how to draft it. If you need a video on how I put, you know, how you sew on tabs to a sleeve, I will do that in another video. Just comment below and let me know and I'll do that in another video as well as the flaps. So that was the second modification was the flaps. So what I did to the flaps was I draft flaps and then added them onto the bus. Now, one thing I wanna mention is, I think I made the flaps a little too wide. Reason being is because I wanted the um, center of the flap to line up with the dart in the bodice at the very bottom. And it does not. And the reason why is because, like I said, I drafted those a little too wide. Um, I didn't know that they were too wide until I put them on. And what I mean by that is because I did measure the distance of the bodice from uh, center front to the side seam. And then that's how, um, and then I kind of like drew on the pattern because I do that all the time. I drew on the pattern, how I wanted my flaps to look, traced it out and then measured um, that distance and created a pattern piece. You can do that all the time and make sure that you add seam allowance to that pattern piece. Um, but that's what I did for my flaps and it came out amazing. But next time, if whenever I do flaps, I will make sure that my flaps is lining up with the uh, darts at the bottom or um, bust darts instead of just basically just being around. But I do like the flaps and I think it just adds a really good detail to this shirt dress. All right, so now that I talked about the modifications, which I went into a little bit more detail than I wanted to, let's talk about if the photos look like the drawing on the pattern envelope. So to be honest with you, I'm gonna say no. 
And the reason why is because I did do modifications. So yes, the dress look exactly like the photos and the drawing on the pattern envelope. And then I'm gonna turn around and say no, because I added modifications. So if you're looking at this dress, you're not gonna see flaps on the pattern. You're not gonna see tabs on the pattern because that was a personal preference that I wanted. So no, it doesn't look like it, but yes, the overall dress looks like the photo on the um, pattern envelope. So yes and no, basically. <laughs> but I like the little styling details that I did better than just basically following the uh, pattern itself. So now that I talked about, did it look like it? Let's talk about these instructions. So are the instructions easy to follow? Um, for the most part, yes. So I did look at the instructions for, I want to say probably about 30% of the dress. I have sewn so many shirt dresses, so I wouldn't say that I looked at every single instructions, but I did look at the instructions for the sake of this review and doing the collar. Now I do the collar my own way, but the way that they wanted you to construct the collar is different than how I do my collar. So I still did my way, of course, and it worked out perfectly, which my way is pretty much a no fail proof, okay? So, but um, I think the only tricky part for this shirt dress is um, basically attaching the back, the yoke back to the front because it does not tell you to do the burrito method where you take the front and the yoke and roll it up and attach it at the shoulder seam. How it have you do it is they want you to take one of the yoke back, attach it to the back at the bottom, sew that together, flip it up, and then attach the second yoke to that to where you have wrong sides together so when you turn it out, it'll be right side on the inside instead of wrong side. So after you do that, it wants you to cut one of the yokes about, uh, you basically make a stitching line five eighths of an inch seam allowance, fold it in, and then trim it down to three eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then attach that to your front piece. I wasn't gonna do all that. that, that was just too much. So I did mine a little different, and basically I did the burrito method in order to attach the front to the yoke pieces and the back. And it worked out perfectly. If you have never heard of the burrito method, you have to go to one of the shirt, the, like a button down shirt, a good pattern to see how you do the burrito method, which I think I have done in one of my tutorials. And I wanna say if you go to the tutorial where it's like Butterick 6686, I'll go ahead and put it up in the card so you can see. I think on that shirt, I did a, the burrito method, but I, if I have one that I did a burrito method for, I will go ahead and link it below so you are able to see what I mean when I say burrito method. But if you have the pattern simplicity 1538, look at the instructions for that on how to do the burrito method for a button down shirt, all right? So, um, and that's what one that has a yoke. If it doesn't have a yoke, you will not have the burrito method. So you have to get a pattern that has a yoke in order to put together a burrito method for the inside and the outside to where you have a clean finish on the inside as well as a clean finish on the outside. All right, so now that we talked about these instructions, let's talk about my likes and dislikes for this pattern. All right, so there are not many dislikes. However, there are some dislikes. Number one, this pattern does not have pockets. So I forgot to mention this in the modifications, but of course, I added pockets. Now I have been asked this before, how do you add pockets to a pattern that does not have pockets? So you, so we're at the waist where you have the waist line on the pattern. You measure down at least one inch. Now I measured down one inch and I wish I would have done an inch and a half because to me, I feel like for this dress, it should have been down about an inch and a half from that waistline instead of one inch because I do feel like I'm doing this in the pockets and I should have made the pockets a little bit bigger because um, my phone can't completely fit in my pockets comfortably. So next time I make a shirt dress and I have to add pockets because the pattern does not have pockets, I will definitely make my pockets one bigger and two, 
Um, I will go from the waist measurement down about an inch and a half instead of one inch. So I did one inch, but I'm telling you, if you want to add pockets, go down about an inch and a half and it should be fine. If you're just doing a half an inch, it's going to be up too far, all right? So that's just a tip that I'm gonna give you this week. Um, but that was one of the things that I did not like about the pattern that it's a shirt dress and you don't have pockets. But this is the second uh, Butterick pattern that I did that's a shirt dress. I also did Butterick 6640 back in December and that did not have pockets either. And that was one of the dislikes for Butterick patterns. I don't think that they put uh, pockets in for their shirt dress. I'm not 100% sure, but I did give you a list of shirt dress patterns that you could choose for Butterick. So you could look at one of their patterns and see if they have pockets. If not, I'm just gonna tell you now, you're gonna have to draft some pockets, okay? Or use another pattern that has pockets or something. But for me, I already have pocket patterns drafted for different styles of dresses and skirts and stuff of that sort. So I don't need to draft one. I just pull it out every time. I just need to add some pockets to pattern, you know, hey. If it's not broken, then don't fix it. Don't recreate the wheel, all right? <laughs> so that's my likes and dislikes. So that's the sec That's the first dislike was the um, pockets. The second dislike was the length of the skirt. So for view A, I, I went with view A simply because that was the shortest view. However, view B, the handkerchief dress, I just feel like it's a little too long. And view C is extremely long, but it's a length preference. So you can always cut that up. Um, the third thing that I did not like about this dress was like for the sleeves, the sleeves being three fourth inch um, length for view A, and I made it short sleeves. It didn't have any details to it. It just seems like, eh, it's a shirt dress. Um, so that's why I created the tab to give it a little bit more mm, and something where it's like elegant and chic and fancy and all of that stuff that goes along with it. So, I mean, to be honest, it wasn't bad, but I just had to put my spin on it to make it better. Okay. So now that we talked about the likes and dislikes for this pattern, let's go ahead and talk about, did I have any first time experiences? No. Well, actually, yes and no. Um, yes, because I had to draft my own tabs and my flaps, which I have never draft tabs. I have draft flaps before um, to put on like a coat or something like that, but I have never drafted tabs and that was the first time me doing that. Um, actually, it's funny because it actually came out Quick, quicker than I thought. I thought that it was going to be too big because I wasn't sure, but it came out quite easily to be to actually begin with because I don't, I didn't have any patterns to kind of just take the pattern, you know, take the tab from another pattern and draft it. I had to actually draw it out on the sleeve where I wanted it to go and then just kind of trace the, you know, the shape of it out and draw it out and it worked out perfectly. I was super surprised and shocked by it, but you could do that just, you know, I'm not one who does a lot of drafting, but I will draft different things that I want. All right, so now that we talked about my first time experiences, which was just basically a little bit more drafting that I usual, usually do, let's talk about sewing skills. Um, so for sewing skills, I would say that this pattern is intermediate sewist. Um, beginner sewing, beginner sewists can do this pattern. However, I will tell you that the skirt has a skirt front, a side skirt front, a skirt back and a side skirt back. So you have to make sure that when you piece in that portion together, you have to make sure you have right sides together because it's easy to put the wrong side to the right side when you attach the front to the back. So other than that, and then it has buttons, it has a collar, it has a front band. So you have to know how to do all of these things if you're a beginner. So that's why I'm gonna rate this pattern as an intermediate sewist, all right? Now that we talked about that, let's talk about would I sew it again and any type of recommendations and why I sewed this pattern. So first of all, um, would I sew it again? 
To be honest with you, no, simply because I think one for this pattern is good. I don't feel like I would sew this again because you need entirely way too much fabric in order to do it. So it, it's not something like a dislike. It's just for me, I just think that this pattern would not be one that I would reach for and grab again to do as another shirt dress. Not for me. Um, but I can see a light for this and I can see um, recommending this pattern to do as if you wanna do like a shirt dress and also wear it as a open shirt dress duster style, kind of like what I did for my Black History Month pattern designer where I did not put on the button and I'm just gonna wear it like a uh, overcoat instead of a shirt dress. Um, now for this one, I could wear it as a dress, I could wear it as a duster, I could wear this many different ways. Um, so yeah, so I would recommend this pattern, but I would say, if you're going to do this pattern, it's not one that's gonna to come together in one day. Um, for me, this pattern took me about two and a half days to do. I did the bodice one day and then the um, skirt the second day and then the next morning I added on the buttons and hem it. So it took two and a half days, not even a half a day, it's like two and a couple of hours of the third day um, before taking photos. But other than that, yeah, no. All right. <laughs> So yes, I uh, no, I would not sew it again. Yes, I would recommend this pattern to others as well. So let's talk about why did I sew this pattern versus a different Butterick pattern. Um, to be honest, the reason why I sewed this pattern is because I know many of you would not think I would sew something like this. Um, simply because on the pattern, it just looks really basic. It looks really old school. Um, it doesn't look like something I would sew. To be honest, to be honest with uh, my viewers, that you guys, I know you guys would never have thought that I would pick this pattern to sew as a sh shirt dress. Now, the reason why I picked it is because all of those factors that I know my followers, my subscribers, my viewers would not select, think that I would select this pattern because of the front of the envelope. Like I have said on many videos, I do not look at the front of the pattern when I'm selecting pattern. I look at the front, yes, to say, oh, you know, that that's cute or that's not cute. For items that are not cute, I look at the line art. And the reason why is because I can see in my mind how I wanna style this, whether it be with heels, whether it be with tennis shoes, flats, what have you, belt, no belt, hat, no hat, purse, no purse. So those are the different things that I look at when I'm looking at the line art of, mm, this is so plain, it needs a little mm, boost in this pattern. So I looked at those things when selecting pattern. Now, because I know many of you know that I sewed 6640, so when I get a pattern suggestions, I already, I did not really have a Butterick pattern that I wanted to select. And then when I looked at my stash and seen this pattern, I was just like, mm, you know what? I have a red fabric to use. And I also have a inspiration photo, which I will go ahead and put up for you guys to see that inspiration photo. So you can see why I selected this one, um, because to get as close to the inspiration photo that I already seen for this, the same fabric, as a matter of fact, it was the same fabric for me. And I just wanted to go ahead and do that dress. All right. But now that I talked about why I selected, let's talk about my pattern rating. So for this pattern, I'm going to give this pattern a four out of five. It's not terribly bad. It does have some things that could have been improved. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna rate this as a four out of five for this pattern. So I would say on the next pattern sale, if you do not have it, go ahead and get it <laughs> and make it your own. All right, so that's all for the pattern review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. Also, if you did not see the um, posting on YouTube and on Instagram, the new Simplicity Spring 2022 patterns are out. They are currently on sale at Joann's for $1.99. So go ahead, head over to Simplicity website, see what patterns you like from the spring 2022 catalog, and then head over to Joann's with your list and your flyer for $1.99. That's all that I have for you in this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video and stay tuned for Sunday as Talisha and I rock out again with another hashtag sewing five and below. I'll catch you soon. So until next time, keep sewing.